get started here, we're going to go over a few of our basic supplies. The first thing we have is a cellulose sponge. Keep him on hand just to help when you wash your brush, keep some of the moisture under control in your workspace. This is my paint tray. I've got out some white, quite a bit of white in the center there. That's where I'm going to be doing my mixing. A few other colors that I know I want to use. A little tub of water. It doesn't matter what size. Then I keep other colors on hand just in case I decide to add some extra color. This is just kitchen towel that I keep on hand. The sponge kind of helps from using too much of that, but it's nice to have anyway. Brushes. Okay, here's a one inch flat brush. This is a half inch filbert. This is a half inch flat. This is like a quarter inch flat. A few other rounds and flats that are smaller brushes, just for details. There's a fan brush in there. Probably won't use him, but I keep him around just in case. Okay, so I'm getting my brush wet first. It just kind of primes the bristles, helps them to not be too stiff. Here we go with the sky. Now I'm going to use the darker blue and the turquoise blue. Kind of interchange those as I go through my sky area. Notice that I'm using a very flat stroke, using the brush very flat and going from one side all the way to the other. And you have to apply quite a lot of paint. Don't try to stretch your paint too far. You'll get streaky whiteness underneath there. I'm now blending the turquoise into the blue, the darker blue. And I'm working quickly here so that the two colors will blend while they're still wet. If you wait until they're dry, you'll just have lines and it won't really blend nicely. You won't get those medium um, tones that are really nice in the background. alternating between the two colors, blending them as I go down. As I start to come down a little bit further, I want to lighten the sky. Most paintings, the sky becomes a little bit lighter as you get towards the horizon line. So I'm just adding white to these colors. I'm blending them all the way up through there so that it's sort of a graduated color change. So as I start to work down towards the bottom of the canvas, I have added a little bit of water to my brush just to kind of help that paint to spread easier. I want to get that really light blue to come on down to the bottom of the canvas. I will be adding more color, but I just kind of want to give myself a base of color on my canvas here. So I'm just adding more color, more of the turquoise in here just to give it more variety. And very, I'm using a lot of just the back and forth motion just to kind of keep it blended and smooth. Okay, I just picked up a little bit of the dark blue. Didn't really mean to do that, but I'm going to show you what you can do. You just add more white in there and really soften it up and it's going to be just fine. As long as you grab it while it's still wet, you can blend and recover. I want to darken the sky just a little bit. Got a little bit of white on my brush, so I'm just going to get some more paint. More of the blue and blend it in there. Wash your brush. When you're washing your brush, you can kind of tap it on the bottom a little bit. It's 
Sometimes it takes a little while to get all the paint out. I use the little sponge to draw my brush with. And then I'm grabbing the one half inch filbert brush. This is a short bristled filbert. It's got a little rounded head and that's going to help us with our cloud formation. Light paint. And I'm just going to start by adding cloud, the top portion of the cloud, making the shape of the cloud. At first your paint's going to be very um, kind of globby and op opaque. You're not going to have much shape, but you have to work with it a little bit. So I want the bottom of the cloud to be soft and kind of fade out into the atmosphere. So I'm working that paint from the top section kind of down to the underside of the cloud. And I'm just tapping my brush. I'm not really doing any um, back and forth painter motion. It's more of a tapping. And see how I'm smoothing out that color and it's going to blend right in with that blue. The blue's still a little bit wet, which is work to your advantage. So again, another top portion of the cloud. And I do kind of change the shapes as I go along. I get the paint down and I just kind of look at it and figure out what kind of shape I want my clouds to have. Just taking advantage of the slightly wet paint underneath to give the clouds some dimension. Here's another little guy I'm putting on top of that big one. See how there's a little darker area there? It kind of lets you see that the cloud that I'm working on now is in front of the one that, that we did previously. Let the ends of your cloud kind of go out to nothing. You can even let little pieces of puffs of cloud kind of go off into the distance. Just really softly, with barely any pressure on my brush, I'm smoothing out those bottom edges. I'd like to put a little bit of pink. don't want it to be too strong, so I'm blending it down with some white, and I'm going to just tap and Part of this cloud. I don't want to cover the entire thing. I just want to give it an area of reflection. And that white that we put on there previously is still wet, so it's blending in with that color so you get a soft mid-tone. Just really smoothing out the underside of the clouds. As you work your way down towards the horizon line, your clouds are further away from you, so they become less detailed, smaller. You don't see as much of the cloud, or you don't see as much of the detail of the cloud, so they can be a little bit smoother and smaller, and as you get further down towards the horizon, they almost become just straight lines and in the distance. And that'll give you the perspective of distance. As I'm working my way down through the composition, I do kind of start looking at the other clouds that I've already worked on, and I'm kind of evaluating them and deciding whether I'm going to put more paint in them. I may put a highlight in there. This one needs a little bit of a highlight on the upper left-hand corner. I want the light to appear to be coming from the left-hand side of the painting. A bit more light on this left-hand side of this cloud up here, the first one we did.
few more smaller clouds before I switch brushes. Less detail, a little bit more, just one color almost. I'm using a little bit more water um, on my brush. Notice how I dip my, wa my brush in the water and then I dry it off on the little sponge and that helps me to, to move that paint easier. I'll switch now to a small liner brush. See how I'm rolling the brush so that the paint will come off and then I'm just going to smooth the bottom edge once again just so that it fades out to nothing. This is just a small liner brush, about a size two or three. And now I'll put in a few more clouds in the distance. The fun thing about doing clouds is that once you start painting them, you start observing clouds much differently. You start seeing what they look like and trying to emulate them in your paintings. Just a few more straight lines in the distance, just with a little, a little bump here and there, just to give the illusion of clouds in the very far off distance. I'm not using very much pressure on my brush. I'm kind of right on the tip of the brush so that the paint is very thin. This is just plain water. I'm just smoothing out some of those rough edges. And now I'm just putting in a few more highlights with my liner brush. Just wanted to give a few more highlights in a few of these clouds. Like I said, as you're doing your composition and it starts to come together, you'll make changes as you go along. That's the beauty of acrylic painting. You can always add more and you can make changes to your composition and your colors as well. Just a touch of pink under here. So this is our basic cloud demonstration. We hope that you've enjoyed this video and that you will experiment and play and learn how to paint clouds. Keep in mind that you can add color as you please. So experiment with different colors, different compositions, and um, any of these paintings you can do a full landscape with. You can add mountains and, and trees. So have fun with clouds. Thank you for joining us.